Hello, this is uh, Nick995. For this video, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favorite TV shows of all time. I'm going to try to uh, keep this video as uh, short as can be, like I did. I, I did this video uh, before, but like it was very long, so yeah, what? Yeah, so so uh, top 10 favorite TV shows of all time. Uh, time. Uh, if you're watching this, please like, subscribe, uh, share the video. Share the video all over Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You know, uh, hopefully by, you know, I, I want to get to 75 to 100 subs by uh, by uh, September. So, uh, so like, uh, if you're watching this and if you're not a subscribe, please uh, subscribe. Please. So, yeah, uh, 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 top 10 favorite uh, TV shows of all time. And uh, keep in mind, again, like, based on my opinion. So, uh, if you guys... I disagree with uh, any of the listing please uh, let me know you know i don't below or or i uh, agree like with certain rankings so i uh, keep in mind like uh, there's a lot of there's uh uh there are shows uh, that are uh, popular shows that i've ever seen sopranos boardwalk empire there's you know like i watch very little uh, you know like of the wire like very 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 little you know uh a lot of shows uh, even shows going back like to the eighties, like I never seen. Man. Yeah, so yeah, so uh, my uh, number ten show here now is gonna be The Punisher. Uh, now The Punisher, this is a Netflix show, so it's Netflix. If you have Netflix, you can you can uh, watch this show. It went on for two seasons. It's a very good, it, you know, like it's a really good show. Like it really, it's centered around revenge and political corruption, military corruption, and you know, you get to see like, you know, like how a quest for a uh, revenge, basically. Like you know, you know how uh, you know there's this guy Punisher, like you know Punisher, the Marvel character. He basically like a lone wolf. He can't really trust anybody because the, uh, the uh. A government is you know like uh you know is after him the rogue cia or whatever our military is after him and then you got the police after him and then so yeah he has to be very careful like who he trusts then uh, season one you, you set up the uh, jigsaw character you have other characters too yeah that uh detective lady you have karen karen who's from uh, daredevil so yeah they kind of tie into daredevil now, if you watch daredevil season two he's in daredevil season two Punisher here, so but a uh, season two, a uh, uh, Daredevil came out uh, before this, so uh, you know uh, this came out after. But yeah, a very good show. Uh, I think they cancelled it after season two. They cancelled it, and season two isn't as good as season one, but still, it's, you know, like if it had more seasons, I'll probably rank this higher. But yeah, that's my number ten. Uh, number nine now is gonna be a uh, Sense Eight. A lot of you guys might not know this show. It's a uh, not really a popular show, but a Netflix show as well. Netflix. Uh, yeah, so it's really, you know, like it's kind of sci-fi, uh, cognitive science. It, you know, like it looks at the mind, you know, like the mind, basically. So you have these eight people. They're all across. They're all around like the world. You have people like you have these. You have one character in India, the other one in Korea, the other one in Germany, America, Iceland, Africa. Can't remember the other one. What was the other one again? I think. Oh no, there's two characters on America. So, yeah. And Mexico. So yeah, you have these eight characters, you know, but they're all mentally uh, connected uh, to each other. They are mentally uh, connected. So they can, for example, like let's say if you're this guy right here, who you know the you know like these African warlords are there after him or whatever. So. He can uh, mentally kind of channel like any you know like uh, energy from uh, this character right here who uh, she's like a master uh, martial artist. He's like a very good martial artist. So uh, giving him uh, you know like uh, her uh, abilities are uh, vice versa. You know, uh, so and then they, they can all swap languages to each other. Like uh, these two, you know, uh, this one speaks Hindu and then this one speaks German, and they swap languages. You know, and then yeah, so. Yeah, and then uh, this one here, like, is an actor, right? He's an actor, the uh, Mexican character. And then, so, yeah, he can help, like, someone. Like, let's say if uh, this guy is in trouble, he can help him. 
uh, out of like a certain uh, situation. So yeah, it's a very good, that's a really good uh, show, you know. So then uh, like it looks at things like there's uh, things like you know uh, who can you trust because you have like this group after uh, like after like uh, these people. Uh, I believe they're called mediums, right? They're so. Uh, each of these characters are uh, they call medium so then you have government troops after them so it's like uh, who can they really trust you know at the same time but yeah sensei that's a number nine uh number eight is gonna be oh <laughs> it's gonna be controversial well uh, yeah true blood yeah, if you guys you know hbo hbo show came out what uh 12 uh, 13 years ago now but yeah uh, yeah so this show went on for seven seasons or six seasons I know the common trend with HBO shows is, well, like a, lot, a lot like of the newer ones that they end, they kind of end uh, disappointingly, you know, a uh, disappointing way. But yeah, this show though, like from seasons, seasons one to five, woo, is, uh, it was actually uh, pretty good. It was pretty good, uh, well uh, written. Although I would say it is a love story too, like in a way which which is why like i didn't rank this higher but you know like it does a very good job for what it you know like uh for what it you know it uh it uh, uh presents you have like in this world you have supernatural creatures you have like vampires werewolves witches you have like uh, these spiritual beings who can take over other people's spirits or whatever so yeah it's a very interesting show but and then uh, uh you know again like you you know it goes into you know, uh, love triangles and character struggles and you know that like in this world uh, like the most uh, it's mostly centered around vampires and humans so uh, people you know uh, vampires like, are starting to get rights you know like uh, human rights there's they're they're uh, starting to they're starting to become more popular like in the world it, it takes place in uh, louisiana so the vampires rise they're you know they and then uh, some of the humans they're not really used to uh, the idea of vampires they're not really used to them uh, living amongst them you know as yet because uh, vampires they're uh, they can be uh, some of them can be very dangerous obviously they need to feast on humans to survive so yeah so a lot of people aren't like on board with the whole idea of vampires but uh there's this uh, unique idea there's uh there's this uh, unique uh, idea where humans uh the uh, humans also drink vampire blood as well so, but the vampire blood uh, is like it's a drug to humans, so it's kind of like heroin. So it's very uh, addictive to you know to humans. But like if they drink it, they kind of get crazy. Humans kind of go crazy or they are, you know, it's like a drug. So yeah, and then obviously the vampires have limitations. They uh, they can only come out at night. They can't come out like in the sun. You know the the you know the typical vampire trope. So are you know a limitation. But they're super strong. They're like ultra strong. They have super senses. They, they have super speed as well, which is kind of weird. <laughs> so they're basically like the Flash from DC. So yeah, but yeah, that's a number eight. Number seven is going to be Daredevil. Another Netflix show. Went on for three seasons. But unfortunately, because of the the whole, you know, uh, MCU, Disney deal or whatever, they, I think a Netflix had to... Uh, they stopped making uh, Daredevil like so like all the Marvel TV shows on Netflix they stopped after you know a certain point. You also had Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, The Defenders, Iron Fist, so all those other shows were cancelled after uh, one to three seasons. Uh, you know, uh, so yeah, Daredevil now it looks at you know yeah you guys know Daredevil, uh, Daredevil, I can't talk. So Daredevil is basically you know like a blind this blind ninja kind of. Uh, a, a, a blind ninja kind of a vigilante but uh, what's very you know like uh, you know what's what's interesting about him is that he has super senses so he can hear he can hear super well so he can hear better better way better than than the normal person so you can hear someone's heartbeat and tell like if they're lying or you can feel like the different you know like the uh, air pressure like in the room so you can tell when when i uh, can tell when uh, somebody like is uh, near him or so then like he you know like in his mind he can visually he can actually visual uh you know uh spatially know like where uh you know uh, everything is because he you know like uh, due, to, uh, due to his super senses he's able to mentally picture where everything is like is okay like let's say like 
Uh, if there's a wall here, like he'll know. He'll know, like uh, if there's a wall here, or you know, if there's steps in front of him, or uh, if there's a bit behind him. So yeah, so it's a very good show. It starts out, you know, obviously you have Kingpin. It sets up Kingpin, which is like the main villain season one. You have the Hand, which is kind of this evil ninja assassin group, like this massive, you know, international group. They want to take over the world. And then uh, uh, season two looks at uh, Electra. He looks at things, you know. Uh, season two introduces Punisher and all that. And yeah, and and uh, a lot of what uh, Daredevil is very similar to Batman in that uh, both of them, uh, even though it's different uh, universes, but both of them don't really kill. Uh, they don't believe in killing. So yeah, like it really looks into that. Like Punisher comes in season two, he's like, oh, uh, maybe like they kill like these thugs. Uh, they're not gonna come back and to haunt you and you know but uh you know our uh, daredevil who is matt murdoch he's uh, he's a lawyer as well so he believes these criminals even though he uh you know uh, beats them up he believes they uh, they deserve uh you know some sort of a uh, fair trial or so so yeah a really good show very good show number six this is gonna be a unique show inside the nba charles barkley kenny smith Ernie Johnson and Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, I love this show so much. I love it. I love it. Uh, now, inside the NBA, you know, you obviously, you know, it, it, they cover NBA games. So, I, I post NBA games. I think it's like every uh, two or three years ago, like when I was uh, watching it uh, last year. I believe it's every Thursday. They, Thursday and Tuesdays, they, they'll be like on... A TNT, so they'll talk about NBA games, they'll break down the NBA games. I really love, you know, right now, like I don't, uh, like I'm not uh, watching the NBA, so I'm only, but sometimes, like I tune in, I'll uh, watch these guys. I go, uh, you know, I go and look at my NBA rant video, like uh, there's a lot of problems that I have, like with the NBA, but like I'd rather, I'd rather listen to these guys talk than I, I watch the actual NBA games. The chemistry between them is so good. They have debates. They talk about funny things, you know, uh, pop culture things as well. They, and then there's obviously the uh, Shaq in a fool. If you got just look up Shaq in a fool, where Shaq kind of makes fun of players who mess up or whatever. Like they'll, there's these bloopers like in a basketball court. It's so funny. It's so funny. They, you know, like you have the funny debate, like the infamous debate where Charles Barkley was talking about uh, LeBron. Uh, LeBron James has enough. He uh, has enough hell, you know. He has enough hell. He's got Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love. He should need all, uh, you know, uh, more help. And then meanwhile, uh, Shaquille O'Neal is like, uh, you don't know how it takes to, you know, to uh, win a championship. Uh, you don't know. Uh, of course, he needs more help. So, like, there's so many great moments in this show. There's moments where Shaq uh, trips over the wire. You guys remember that? There's the recent event where he talks about they're, they're, they're uh, debating about gas uh, mathematics and so forth. Then they make animations off of them. It's, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. And Ernie Johnson is like the moderator. But even he, you know, uh, comes in sometime. He talks about, you know, he, he'll he help our uh, debate, you know. But yeah, a uh, very good show. That's my number six. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, and again, uh, this is a very uh, weird choice. Because that's not really your typical TV show. It's kind of like an after show, but still, they, they still have episodes. Uh, like, you go on YouTube and going back to 2015, they still have episode numbers. So, yeah. So, what is this now? Number five is Walking Dead. Walking Dead AMC. I love The Walking Dead now. At least in its early seasons. I, I stopped watching it after season... Was it season seven or six? Around 2016 or 17. But yeah, Walking Dead, a zombie apocalypse. You have a Rick Grimes like on his group or whatever. He goes, he you know he uh you know like they're trapped in the zombie uh, apocalypse. So it's basically him uh, leading like this group, but they can't really trust any outsiders. You know the, the outsiders like really in zombie apocalypse, uh, uh, humans can become and uh, you know uh, humans they. Obviously, they are resurrect, you know, uh, once they die, they kind of resurrect like into zombies, into like a lesser form. So, uh, humans that are living like in certain groups or whatever, in separate groups, I can't really trust them because they're people fighting over supplies. And there are, there's even like a little a part like in the show where there's these uh, cannibals or whatever, it can get very gruesome. So, yeah. 
Uh, and then obviously, you have uh, Rick Grimes here, you have Daryl, you have Carl, Michonne, uh, I can't remember, it's Glenn, what is it, Glenn, the governor. Then a later, uh, later seasons, it, uh, you know, it introduces Negan, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, a great actor, great, great, great actor. So yeah, they all did a very good job. Daryl is probably like, uh, what, I really like uh, what I really uh, like about Daryl is that he's kind of represents that character where uh, he doesn't really trust people. And uh, Rick Grimes as well, uh, he doesn't trust people. And there are, are people like, in the group that are more open to uh, letting like, others in. Some people I uh, can't trust, there's very few. Then there's moments where they go like into prisons. They go all over prisons, government uh, uh, facilities, and they're going into factories, like old deserted factories, and yeah. But uh, so number five, I'm not really a big uh, fan. Uh, I don't like zombies. Uh, like zombie genre is not for me. But man, uh, uh, for what he was able to do for his first five seasons is very good, and and lots of uh, suspense to it as well. Number four is Prison Break. A popular another popular show yeah, you guys will know this old show this is probably the oldest show on my list yeah it is it's probably the oldest aside from inside the nba which has been going on for like uh like a uh, 30 years it's probably the oldest show uh prison break you have a lincoln bros Schofield. lincoln bros now he was accused for killing uh you know for killing the uh, president's brother but however uh, he, uh, he was uh, accused uh, so uh, but it turns out that somebody else actually killed the brother and then blamed it like on him you know, there's a whole uh, conspiracy going around so he uh, goes to jail he's put under uh, death row you have Schofield now which is super intelligent he's able to like process things like on this high highly uh, you know uh, intelligent level so, or whatever so you know like he's like a master you know like he's very easy to uh, solve things or whatever like so he studies this prison that his brother goes to so he wants to go there to help uh, free his brother so he's very smart like he knows the prison like by heart he knows that like, every corridor like every door every like, hallway like where the hallways lead then there's this underground tunnel it's very it's very uh, sophisticated then you know they, you have a uh, prison then and then like in prison too like really shows how dirty prison can get they have the dirty police guard guy uh, like you guys know his name i can't remember his name was it belic i can't remember his name belic that you have that dirty prison guard guy you had uh uh Rootsy. you had t-bag which is the mvp of this show he makes the show so great every time he's on screen man <laughs> jesus well yeah it, uh, it's a very good show and then they uh end of a uh, light spoilers light spoilers sorry but the end of season one they uh, they escape prison then there's uh there's uh, eight there's eight prisoners of them uh, along with them uh, that escape with them but uh, some of them they uh, leave behind it, obviously some of them uh, you can't trust because uh, once they uh, get out of prison i uh, can't trust them and then uh, the show you know it it uh you know it uh, looks into after that like it goes into uh what do you call it again i focuses more on the uh, conspiracy and you know uh, there's something they call the company which was which uh, which was uh, responsible for uh, accusing him for uh, killing the, the uh, president's brother or whatever or a part some sort of politician's brother so yeah that's a very good you know it's really good it looks at the obviously character struggles and who can you trust really in this world in you know and like they're always like, on the move because the fbi like is after them uh, uh you know the fbi the police like the entire united states is after them they're like uh, america's most wanted basically even though uh, they didn't really do anything wrong but yeah that's my number four number three you guys will know this show too very popular show uh, the rest of these shows will be very popular except one breaking bad duh, 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 duh. Man, Walter White, man, Brian Cranston, and Aaron Paul they did such a great job with this role, with these roles. Yeah, Walter White now. He's, you know, uh, for those of you that don't know, I haven't seen it. He's a high school chemistry teacher. He's very good. Like he knows chemistry like by heart. He knows it. He knows it like very well. But uh, one unlucky day, he finds out he has cancer. He's coughing. He's 
a coughing or blood or whatever, he realizes he, ha he has cancer. So he has like how many, like, I believe it's like two years that I left to live or something like that. So he realizes he, you know, like his brother, his brother-in-law is a DEA agent. So the drug, the drug enforcement uh, administrative uh, administration that uh, takes place in Albuquerque, uh, New Mexico. So there's a lot of, they bust drug, drug dealers and methamphetamine. So a uh, Walter White looks on TV, sees how much money the, the police sees from this one uh, meth house or whatever. He's wondering, I do chemistry. What if I could put my skills toward that and I can make millions of dollars? To uh, making meth, so he meets up with Jesse. Jesse, who's his former high school student of his, but he remembers, you know, uh, Jesse. He starts out as uh, like this junkie, like this street junkie, you know, uh, uh, for a uh, lack of a better word. Sorry, but you have, but like I really like the characters over time. They really change. Like uh, Jesse, they all have so many layers to them. Walter White's wife as well. Oh, who I don't like. I don't. Skylar is annoying. She's very annoying. But even she, you can understand her struggles as well. She has to come to terms with her husband being this, like, major drug dealer, uh, you know, like, or whatever. And then, like, I yeah, really see Mr. White, like, how, I uh, like spoilers, how, uh, you know, yeah, he starts out very innocent. But over time, you can really see the turn, the, the uh, a turn, like, in his character. Like this uh, drug world, uh, it can really make people, you know, go dirty because they have to watch it for the police, like rival drug, uh, you know, uh, drug gangs or whatever. Then uh, through that too, you uh, meet uh, Gustavo Frank, played by Giancarlo, Giancarlo uh, Esposito, MVP quality performance, MVP quality performance, or MVC, most, most valuable character. Gustavo Fring. Let's look up Gustavo Fring. He's amazing in the show. He's amazing. My God. Woo. You have uh, things like uh, what was it again? You have uh, uh, also characters like Mike. You have the guy uh, Better Call Saul, the corrupt lawyer guy. <laughs> it's what it's really, really, really good. It's very good, and you know, every single character they have a big role. They they all have something to do uh, important, uh, big like with the plot, you know. They all, you know, uh, impact the, the plot in some way. And there's a lot of things like uh, morality issues and, you know, uh, uh, playing the uh, drug game dirty, uh, getting down and dirty and cutthroat and, yeah. That's a very good show, really, really good show. But I can't say too much about it, otherwise I'm going to spoil it for those who haven't seen it. But, yeah, that, uh, that's my number three. Number two, you guys know this. No, 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 Oh, one of the greatest stories ever made, like ever made. George R. R. Martin, he made the books. Song of Ice and Fire. Again, a Game of Thrones is based on Song of Ice and Fire uh, novels. Uh, written by George R. R. Martin. Look him up. Uh, for those that don't know. Man, he did an amazing job, you know, and then HBO kind of uh, adapted like those books. So you have, yeah, so uh, uh, this show went on for eight seasons. And for those that know about Game of Thrones, you're going to know the controversy. Why they didn't put this as number one? Because that because of those seasons seven and eight, where the quality of the writing went downhill. This went, <sighs> It went from like master quality, like masterpiece quality to like down like then yeah, like it just went straight down like to the toilet. So yeah. That's the only reason why I don't have this as number one. But great show. Very, very, very good show. I started I, I didn't watch this originally like when it came out, but I watched it after. I watched it uh roughly around um twenty fifteen. So I started watching it uh, 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 around then. So my friend tells me Oh, Nicholas, see to uh, check uh, check out this show, Game of Thrones. But at first, I wasn't feeling the show. I uh, watched the show uh, first time. Ah, uh, I didn't really like it that much. But I gave it another chance. It's like, but uh, once you get past the second half of uh, season one, it's like, wow, this is getting real. This is getting intense. There's suspense. There's drama. There's betrayal. There's tragedy. There's character struggles. There's the who can you trust theme in it, you know, there's the, you know, 
uh, there is the uh, Dickhead Kings. Uh, obviously, it takes place in a medieval time. So there's kings and queens and, you know, you have uh, things like, you know, there is uh, sword battles and jousting and all that, you know. A, a very underrated part of the show is different in culture. They, they have, and they have, they all have these, uh, they, they have these five different uh, religions. You have the old gods, the new. Then the old gods are kind of like these tree gods or whatever. They can, you can see spiritually, see things like in the past. Uh, only, only certain characters can do that. Only very few characters. Then you have the the fire god or whatever. You have the uh, the seven. Oh, what do you call it again? The uh, the uh, seven the uh, seven uh, pointed star, which is kind of based off. And then uh, these religions, the seven pointed star, I think is based off of our Christianity. So uh, which is like the dominant uh, religion. You have the John God, which is like the sea god. Uh, you know, uh, but you don't really see them like in the show. You only see the people like who uh, worship them and their uh, ideals or whatever. You have the uh, many faced God. It's such an amazing world that George R. R. Martin crafted. And then you have people like you have, you know, uh, Nordic tribes. You have uh, like it's based on uh, some of the card, you know, like the groups like they're based on like actual real life kind of uh, like old groups like that took place a thousand years ago so you have like nordic tribes uh, uh, uh wildlings you have like medieval you know families or whatever houses you have like uh, castles like these massive castles and like uh, each house though like they all represent you know they're all like they all have their their own uh, ideals and they have alliances and alliances so there's the there's the north, there's the south, there's the reach, there's the west, east. Then you have, you know, there's a lot of conflict in between them that happens over time. You get to see things like, you know, a king is getting uh, usurped or whatever. And uh, there's a lot of uh, lore. I watch the lore on this. Uh, before you watch season one, uh, for those who haven't seen it, watch the lore. Like Song of Ice and Fire lore. Just look it up on YouTube. Like you'll see there's a lot of history behind it as well. Like this is just... This is just a very small point. Like uh, this show just looks at a very tiny point, small point, uh, in the history of a song of ice and fire. But there, like if you uh, look at the books, there's a whole history uh, before it, uh, before the, uh, before like this show. But yeah, unfortunate what happened. You know, the writing went downhill once season seven started. It's like the writers didn't care. It's that's a real shame. It's a real, it's a real shame of what happened. But. Yeah, but then uh, upon watching it my first time, I was confused. It manages a lot of storylines. It manages a lot of storylines. There's lots of things going on. But what, how uh, you know, uh, what it really does great is it, it like it's able to manage these storylines. Uh, you know, uh, effectively, efficiently. So they really and then so every character kind of ties in, back in. They all have a major role and. You know, there's a, you know, obviously that all goes back to the conflict, to this Game of Thrones, the quest for the Iron Throne, and whose birthright is it, and all that. It's a great show. It's one of the greatest stories ever told. But yeah, that's my number two. Man. No, 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 no. <laughs> number one is The Expanse. Amazon Prime. You guys will know, I, I talked about this before. The Expanse, now you look at. It takes place in the future, so I believe it's 300 to 400 years in the future. You have Earth. Earth is, there's a 30 billion people. There's a lot of unemployment. There's, you know, the unemployment population has gotten, you know, because you have more people, like you have so many people, like 30 billion people, more like the jobs, like how do you I get those people like into jobs and whatever, so, or uh, businesses or whatever, so yeah. But it mainly looks at space, so, yeah, Mars. Yeah, so Mars breaks. So Mars is basically like, uh, like if you guys follow American history, you know that America was independent from England, right? Going back 300, 400 years ago, uh, 400 years ago. So Mars came, uh, you know, uh, independent from Earth. So you have Mars trying to uh, break, th you know, they uh, broke uh, free of Earth. So Martians are this militaristic, they try uh, kind of planet so they're very military base they make warships they have marines they have so many soldiers they have you know 
Uh, but they live in domes, so so uh, Martians they live in domes, and obviously uh, they're uh, they're nowhere near as many. Uh, Martians are, you know, like uh, uh, there are like very few Martians uh, compared to how many Earthers there are in this time. So uh, Mars' main objective is that they're trying to terraform Mars. So they're trying to make Mars into a second Earth, so they can make the atmosphere into, uh, yeah, they can make Mars into this uh, livable planet. But then uh, that's not even it. Like uh, that's just touching the surface. You have belters, belters. They live on these asteroid belts, and like it's way, way out like in the solar system. So they live near like Saturn, Jupiter, uh, you know, like so, you know, uh, what's the planet? You know, Venus. So they, you know, they uh, live on like these, ma these massive, you know, like massive asteroids or I don't know like what you call them or whatever, but they they uh, live on these uh, asteroids. Like on these giant rocks, so they they're able to have domes uh, within these rocks or whatever. You have things like Ceres Station, Eros, you have uh, Palace Station. So they are living, you know, like these rocks. And then Belters, what's very unique about them is that they live in low gravity. So because of that, their spinal cords are able to grow more. So they're taller than, they're very, they're taller than people that live on Earth and Mars. They're taller, but, and uh, they're able to, uh, to uh, adapt to zero gravity very easily. But uh, they can't live on planets, belters can't live on planets because the uh, planetary gravity on their body, the pressure on the body would be too much uh, for them to uh, survive on, on planets. But it looks a lot of things political corruption it's amazing character development character struggles things like again there's a who can you trust that is a lot of that in this video who can you trust there is you know and then obviously there is this virus that alien virus that kind of gets introduced in season one where like and then it starts this mass conflict it uh, kills it it uh, kills off a lots of belters and then belters they're in this world they're they're being uh you know uh, oppressed by the bigger superpowers earth and mars so earth and mars kind of uh, oppresses belters they have this government control tight government control then you see belters they're they're uh they uh, belters see earthers and martians as uh, they call them inners 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 so they hate uh, uh some of the belters that really hate inners they really hate them because the inners they are uh, oppressive towards them uh, not all inners, obviously not all, you know, come on, like, there's so many people, but the government is so, you know, that can be wicked towards the belters and whatever. But it's a very good, it's a very good show, and then uh, later on in the show, it looks at things like terrorism, there's, ter there's massive global scale attacks, there's ship battles, oh man, like, uh, I won't touch the, I won't touch the surface, like, if I was to talk about this, like, this video, like, would be too long, but, yeah, but man great show very very good show and it's not a popular show you guys probably won't you, you guys probably won't i would have never uh, heard of this show it was a very good show i started watching it three years ago it went from sci-fi to amazon prime let's look up the expanse or look up james s.a curry sorry james s.a curry look up uh his novels like the novel series where you have two people writing ty frank and daniel abraham very good really 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 good so let's go over this one more time Number 10, Punisher, 9, Sense8, you have 8, True Blood, 7, Daredevil, 6, Inside the NBA, TNT, 5, Walking Dead, 4, Prison Break, 3, Breaking Bad, 2, Game of Thrones, and 1, The Expanse. And so yeah, those are my favorite TV shows of all time. And when I watch more TV shows, I'm going to add more to the list then see how they rank uh, with these other TV shows. But I uh, th thank you guys for watching. I thank you uh, very much. Uh, thank, you for the, uh, thank you for your uh, patience. Please like, subscribe, share the video. Share the video all over. Thank you.